A very warm good morning, students. Oh, sorry, my dear future doctors, engineers, agriculturists, scientists, pharmacists, what not, who would be experting the way we live in this world and architect a beautiful future of, for the coming generations. I welcome you all to the Model School webinars for Intermediate. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the BIPC students who have chosen a step as a BIPC as a foundation for their career. BIPC students will have a great learning experience of most beautiful subjects of living forms such as botany and zoology. Okay, now here in this section, uh, you have to learn, know about two things. First thing is, what are the career options if you take by PC in the intermediate level? And the second one is today we'll be learning about or you'll be learning about what are the syllabus coverage in the first year. Okay, now zoology, because it's a zoology webinars, let us talk about the zoology. Okay, now zoology is one of the most beautiful and popular branches of sciences that involves the study of all living forms of animals in nature and their biological processes. Now, students in this discipline, uh, we basically, we teach them or they are regarding about uh, diversity in animals, classification, anatomy, physiology, biodiversity, uh, molecular biology, genetics, evolution, ecology, and also about the behavior and also the conservation of nature. Isn't it? Now, let, uh, let me be more clear. Today, I'll just let you know what are the career options if you take BIPC as a subject. Now, children, after you pass out from the intermediate, before you pass out also, you should have this prior knowledge. Isn't it? Now, there are many uh, options are available. See, after your intermediate directly, you can go for diploma or uh, certificate courses where you can have a beautiful uh, option such as nursing okay and also as technicians lab technicians where we in india we have huge demand of these two things not only in india in the world we have but only the diploma or certificate courses it doesn't uh, have a very bright future but immediate uh, career you can have um, uh, income but if you want to stabilize and grow more, so you have to pursue for degree courses. So after you take the BIPC, generally people, students, in especially in, uh, in our states, they take uh, BIPC because they aim for medicine, isn't it? So medicine is not only the option. We have many other options. Now let us see uh, about those options. Now suppose you have done the BIPC, you have passed through the need and everything. Yes, definitely you will become the future doctors. Okay, the doctors also you have many things like veterinary doctors are also doctors. Dentists are also doctors. Don't underestimate these two things. They are also having great future. Okay, and uh, suppose medicine is not uh, to your this thing. If you are interested in agriculture, so you can take BSc at the degree level I'm talking medicine either it may be BSc agriculture, okay? And it is also like, you cannot get the seed that easily unless you work hard, literally, you will get in BSc agriculture, okay? And B pharmacy, pharmacy is also a huge industry. Now you know about this uh, COVID situations and the pharma industry, how it is minting the money, isn't it? So in the degree level, you have pharmacy and uh, uh, you have very, very bright future. You can be an entrepreneur or you can be an, uh, working in a very good uh, designation at the pharmacy industry. Okay, next, what are the other options? See, generally we talk about this pharmacy, agriculture and medicine. But children, there are many other options like, so uh, suppose in your degree, not like you're not uh, liking about the medicine or the agriculture or farmer, but you are interested more 
the other things so at the degree level what are the options you have you can choose a combination of biochemistry molecular biology uh, many options are there at present where children are really blessed so in that way if you go at degree level and the mastering those subjects as msc level that is generally we call it as msc masters degrees and next to phd that is doctoral degrees so you can go uh, up to phd and post doctoral also so what is what will be the future you can be an a scientist you can generate medicines and you have many options like immunology molecular biology marine biologist you can become many uh, many options you have children okay so here not only about the scientist but you can be be an a conservationist you can go for a wildlife educationist and you can also become a forensic expert there are many options children when i am i have taken a by pc at that time i don't have this much knowledge so i have uh, confined myself to a small things like doctor isn't it that's it and not even the veterinary doctor not even the dentist not even the uh, bsc agriculture where at that time i have options but i didn't do i didn't opt for it but i have become a best teacher i know because i am very passionate about the teaching so teaching is also an option for you okay now see why we are uh, conveying all these things is this is a time where we need a people who are trustworthy hard working and very passionate enthusiastic and very curious to learn the things and main important thing is empathetic towards the people they serve okay service oriented and empathizing is needed in this post covid world so i want you all to be among them the as a great learners and great people who serve the world okay so this is about the career options now today uh, we have a guest okay presenter uh with us uh, her name is mrs prasanna kumari she is pgt and she is from working at monagala surya pet district and she is also a straight resource person and she has a very beautiful and vast uh, uh working experience at different levels of almost 20 years okay and uh, at any moment at any curious questions you pose she'll have a answer for you okay she is the best teacher like all these uh, like all the webinars i have traveled okay and today i welcome her because she will be giving you what you all have to learn in the first year syllabus okay i welcome mrs prasanna kumari ma'am good morning madam welcome good morning ma'am thank you for the introduction ma'am yes please continue the session ma'am sure yeah. thank you children enjoy the session i'll be back okay hey, good morning students a splendid welcome to your first years and i wish you a very bright future and all the best for your future so let's begin with our topic today i'm going to discuss an overview of zoology syllabus of your first year that is intermediate first year zoology so i hope you all know the definition of zoology so before going to the zoology let's talk about biology you have already studied uh, regarding the definition of biology in your previous classes like 9th class 8th class and almost in 10th class biology is nothing but the study of life of living organisms so it is derived from the latin word this biology has two branches one is botany and second one is zoology botany deals with the life of plants whereas zoology deals with the life of animals so today you are going to uh, know more about the syllabus which is included for your first year so total you have eight units in your first year zoology the first unit is going to be the diversity of living world under this topic 
you have so many sub topics like what is life so in this first year first you are going to learn about what is life and what is the difference between living organisms and the non living organisms and next nature scope and meaning of zoology third concept is different branches of zoology what are the branches and what are the different concepts that are going to be learned in your first year zoology and next need for classification so why organisms have to classify why animals have to classify and how they are named how the scientific name to an organism will be given in different ways so that and the history of biological classification also you are going to study in your first year uh, sub concept that is need for classification and next is levels and hierarchy of classification according to linear so what are the important levels and what are the uh, maximum levels of classification to classify organisms into different groups classification is nothing but a grouping of organisms next nomenclature and then species concept concept of species is also you going to learn in this first chapter and finally uh, kingdom animalia and biodiversity biodiversity is nothing but the differences among the entire living world so in this biodiversity you are going to study about meaning and distribution that is genetic diversity species diversity ecosystem diversity under that alpha beta and gamma diversities and other attributes of biodiversity role of biodiversity threats to biodiversity methods of conservation of different organisms and iucn red data books conservation of wildlife in india legislation preservation organizations and threatened species so this 1.1 uh, to 1.10 includes under first unit that is diversity of living world the second chapter is going to be the structural organizations in animals so in this we'll discuss uh, pro uh, protoplasmic organisms and metazoans protozoans and metazoans protozoans are the first organisms which were evolved for the first time and which are unicellular metazoans are the organisms which are multicellular and the, the mode of organization how the body has designed the body organization was made to these two groups of organisms for their better life under this unit the sub, sub concepts will be levels of organization that is multicellularity diploblastic and triploblastic conditions here diploblastic and triploblastic are nothing but the number of embryonic germ layers those organisms are having during their embryonic development die refers to two and tri refers to three blastoma is nothing but the layer so how during course of evolution and during the course of embryonic development the number of uh, embryonic germ layers which were advanced right from two layers to three layers that is diploblastic condition to triploblastic condition that we are going to study under levels of organization then importance of symmetry symmetry is nothing but geometrical arrangement of body organs to receive the stimuli equally from all surroundings so that geometrical arrangement of uh, organism different organs and different organisms are going to be studied under symmetry and in this we are going to study importance of symmetry and different types of symmetries like asymmetry radial symmetry bilateral symmetry and then sea log these are nothing but the key transitions of evolution the first key transition is levels of organization second key transition during the course of evolution is importance of symmetry and third key transition is development of the sea log so three are the uh, key transitions during the course of evolution of animals so sea log is nothing but body cavity how the body cavity has developed right from embryonic development and how this body cavity is helping in movements of body organs and movements of an organism and different types of sea loams we are going to study like acy loam pseudo sea loam and uci loam and the organisms which are possessing these different sea loams are called acy loamates pseudo sea loamates and uci loamates 
Eosilamates are again of two types, schizosilamates and enterosilamates. The entire brief account of all these different types of coelom and their formation we are going to study on the coelom part. Next, animal tissues. So how the cell is undergoing proliferation, how the tissues are formed and what are the different functions of the tissues and different types of tissues we are going to study, study under structural organization in animals. This is the second unit. Then coming to the third chapter that is animal diversity one. Diversity already I told you the different lifestyles, differences among different living organisms we are going to study under part one that is animal diversity one which includes invertebrate phyla. Invertebrates are nothing but the group of organisms which do not possess a vertebral column or which do not have a backbone those are called invertebrates. So under this unit we are going to study the general characters or important features of each and every class and the different classifications of the invertebrate phyla. The different phyla of invertebrates include phylum porifera, nidaria, tenophora, platyhelminthes, nematoda or nemathelminthes, annelida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata and hemichordata. Right from porifera to echinodermata all are invertebrates. Hemichordata. Hemi means semi. It is not completely an invertebrate. This is not completely a vertebrate. So these hemichordates are having <laughs> both the characters of invertebrates as well as vertebrates. Hence hemichordates are considered to be the connecting links between invertebrates and vertebrates. So all these phyla important features or silent features of these individuals and their classification we are going to study under animal diversity one which is nothing but invertebrate phyla group. Then fourth unit comprise the second part of the diversity of organisms that is animal diversity two. So how the organisms are exhibiting differences among the vertebrates. Sorry, this I have written invertebrate phyla. Please make a correction. This is vertebrate phyla. Okay, in this also, the animal diversity too, we are going to study general characters, that is silent features of each and every class and their classifications. Under this unit, we are going to discuss phylum chordata, and that is subphylum Europodata or tunicata, which is important for your uh, IP purpose. Subphylum cephalochordata, subphylum vertebrata or craniata. Under this, superclass Aneta and Nathostomata. Nathostomata includes fishes like chondrichthys and osteichthys. And then tetrapods. Tetrapods include amphibians, and you are going to study frog as type study in this. Next fifth chapter is going to be the locomotion and reproduction especially in protozoans. So locomotion and reproduction this is nothing but these are the two important features exhibited by organisms. So one is locomotion means we animals are moving from one place to another place. Changing of place is locomotion. So why organisms are moving from one place to another place to procure food material or to escape from the enemies or to uh, search for their mates during reproduction. So for these three aspects organisms are exhibiting a tendency called locomotion and then a very important life process to increase the generation of a species every organism tend to continue its generation. So each and every organism is undergoing a special process called reproduction. So locomotion and reproduction is the first unit, uh, fifth unit of your first year syllabus. Under this, locomotion in protozoa, that is types of locomotor structures like pseudopodia, flagella and cilia, we are going to discuss in detail, flagellar and ciliary movement, then the reproduction definitions like different types of uh, reproductions, asexual reproduction, 
under which we are going to study longitudinal binary fission and transverse binary fission in parameter and multiple fission. And finally, sexual reproduction in protozoans. Where, uh, uh, these are the different topics you are going to study under locomotion and reproduction. Next, coming to the sixth unit that is biology in human welfare. How the biological organisms are favoring the human beings and how they are affecting the life of the human beings in spite being getting benefited from the human beings. So under this, we are going to discuss an interesting topics as we are facing many problems, health issues, and uh, we don't know exactly what are the reasons for our health issues. So minimum knowledge you're going to get in this unit uh, that is in biology and human welfare. So under this, we have to discuss, we are going to discuss in detail the parasitism and parasitic adaptations. Parasite, you all know the disease causing organisms or an organism which depend on other organisms for food are called parasites. And these parasites, in spite of getting food from the host, they are causing much damage to the body. So what are the different diseases caused by different parasites to human beings? We are going to study under biology in human welfare. And we are going to discuss about health and disease, differences between health and disease, and introduction of this topic, then life cycles of different parasites, their pathogenicity means their disease causing nature and treatment and prevention uh, to avoid getting those diseases. So what are the different parasites we are going to study in this chapter are Entamoeba histolytica, Plasmodium vivax, Ascaris lumbricoides, Ucaridia pancroctin. Entamoeba histolytica belongs to the phylum protozoa. Plasmodium vivax is also a protozoan. Ascaris lumbricoid is a nematode and Ucaridia bancrofti is also a nematode. So these two, uh, last two uh, parasites are roundworms, whereas first two parasites are the protozoans. Next, brief account of some other diseases like uh, pathogenicity treatment of typhoid, pneumonia, common cold, and ringworm. So the, all these diseases also we are going to study under biology, human welfare. And finally, tobacco, drug, and alcohol abuse. Nowadays, the youngsters, the teenagers are very much addicted to the drugs and tobacco, alcohol use, and they are not using it properly. So that's why, what are the effects of abuse of tobacco, drugs, and alcohol that we are going to study under biology, human welfare. Let's move on. Seventh chapter is going to be the type study of your best friend, which is roaming in your kitchen and uh, halls, etc. So that is nothing but Periplaneta americana. It is commonly called cockroach. Type study refers to entire system, uh, systematic study and detailed study of a single species organism that is called type study. So in this seventh chapter, we are going to discuss in detail uh, the different uh, habitant habitats, habitant habitat of cockroach, external features and morphology of the cockroach and its way of locomotion, how it's walking and running, then different systems of uh, the cockroach, how it is surviving its life, so the different systems which are helping the cockroach to survive in a better way, those systems we are going to study, that is respiratory, digestive, respiratory, circulatory, excretory, nervous system and reproductive systems of cockroach. Eighth unit, this is the last unit, that is ecology and environment. So every individual, every human being is having, they must have concern towards our environment. So in detail, we are going to study the ecological conditions and environmental issues and how we have to conserve our own environment. Those things we are, we are going to discuss under ecology and environment. Under this 8.1 to 8.8 .8 are the subtopics that is organism and environment. Second is ecosystem. Third one is 
population interactions fourth is ecosystems and their components fifth one is food chains food web productivity and energy flow in the ecosystem and different ecological pyramids you have came across all these topics in your lower classes like 10th and 9th nutrient cycles like carbon nitrogen and phosphorus cycles population attributes growth natality mortality age distribution population regulation etc and environmental issues also we are going to discuss under this topic environmental issues like global warming greenhouse effect and how we have to conserve our environment entire thing we are going to discuss under ecology and environment i hope you got an idea that how many units you have and what are the sub units uh, in each unit okay let's move on so i would like to explain you the blueprint blueprint was discovered by john hendrick in the year 1842 this blueprint is nothing but it's a design plan technical design which is put on paper to explain in detail the topics here in your first year i told you you have total eight units from these eight units in your final examination or in your ip examination you are going to get 76 marks paper out of 76 you have to answer only 60 marks paper and the time duration for your examination would be 3 hours let me explain you from each unit how many marks you are going to get okay in the first unit that is zoology uh, diversity of living world the total weightage of marks is 6 means you are going to get one very short question and one four marks question total weightage is 6 marks from the second unit you are going to get three two marks questions means you have to concentrate more on the very short questions of the structural organizations in animals three very short and one four marks question each very short question carries two marks and short answer question carries four marks so total marks total weightage from that unit is 10 then third from third unit that is diversity one invertebrate phyla you are going to get 6 marks weightage that is from very short question one very short question and one short answer question from fourth unit animal diversity two total weightage is 6 marks same as the third unit one very short and one short answer four marks question and from fifth unit total weightage is 8 marks two very short questions you are going to get and one short answer question one four marks question and from sixth unit biology and human welfare total weightage is 14 marks so this is very 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 important even for your competitive exams so from this unit you are going to get one very short one short question and one long question essay type of questions carry 8 marks total 14 marks is the weightage of 6th unit 7th unit type of periplanetary st type study that is cockroach type study from this unit you are going to get 14 marks that is one four marks question and one essay type of question and then from the last unit ecology and environment total weightage is 14 marks and you are going to get one very short one four marks and one eight marks question that is essay type of question so total marks total weightage from the first year for ip exam is 76 marks out of 76 you have to answer only 60 marks paper so now i would like to you like to show you the model question paper of your first year to get an idea how you have to answer to get 60 marks so let us discuss model question paper so students you please observe here the time duration for your ip exam is 3 hours 
and maximum marks will be 60 and your question paper is having three sections section a section b and section c section a consists of very short questions total 10 very short questions each question carries two marks so you have to answer all the questions no choice will be given from the section a section b is including short answer questions each question carries four marks so in the section b you will be given eight questions out of eight any six you have to answer your choice okay no choice in the first section in the section a there is no choice for you whereas in section b you have two choices so out of eight you have to answer six questions each question carries four marks and section c include essay type or long answer type of questions and each question carries eight marks you will be given three questions out of three you have to answer any two that is one question is choice for you any two okay there is no restriction but coming to section a you have to answer all the questions and you you have to answer for 20 marks so each question carries two marks okay so uh, let me go back i would like to tell you the weightage for mset from the first year syllabus please note down students from the first unit that is diversity of living world for your mset purpose you will be getting three percent of questions means total 160 questions will be there for mz out of 160 uh, each subject uh, botany zoology physics and chemistry each subject carries 40 marks when you come to zoology part you will be getting 40 questions out of 40 50 percent from first year and 50 percent from the second year so weightage from the first unit out of 20 questions if i say uh, from the out of 20 questions from diversity of living world you are going to get three percent of questions for your mc and ten percent of questions for your need purpose from this first unit so diversity of living world is very important for need rather than mz okay next coming to second unit from second unit uh, you won't get any questions from the mz point of view but in need you will be getting two percent question that is one question at least minimum one question you will get from structural organizations for need purpose then coming to third unit animal diversity one from for mz purpose we'll be getting 11 percent of questions so this is very 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 important you have to concentrate more on invertebrate phyla to answer very well in the mz point of view so 11 percent of questions you will get from invertebrate phyla then coming to animal diversity 2 that is fourth unit seven percent of questions we are going to get for mz this is also important and from fifth unit locomotion and reproduction only two percent of questions you are going to get and from sixth unit 15 percent biology and human welfare is also holding much importance uh, in distribution of questions for mz purpose so diversity one is taking part 11 percent of questions whereas biology and human welfare sixth unit is uh, standing at 15 percent of questions and then periplaneta americana you're going to get only three percent whereas from ecology and environment total eight percent of questions you are going to for your mc so here i discuss only two topics for need that is diversity of living world and and then structural organizations so why I have discussed only two units means need syllabus is quite different from the MZ syllabus. So all units are important for MZ and especially the invertebrate phyla as well as biology and human welfare are you have to concentrate more. And for IP point of view, you have to concentrate more on biology, human welfare, periplaneta americana and ecology and environment from where you are getting long answer questions. I hope uh, you understand well.
Thank you very much, students. Was a nice presentation, uh, Prasanna Kumari, madam. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, clear explanation of the syllabus, the blueprint, as well as the model question paper, the weightage of the questions, very clearly uh, explained by you. Hope students understood the pattern of the question paper in the beginning, uh, in the first day itself. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And we expect more sessions from you. Thank you. <laughs>